What the? Oh, sh that's not that. That's this. Oh, yeah, I blew a line. Ah, oh, wore through there. I lose all my oil here. Good morning, everybody. Today is May 22nd, and we are switched over to seeding canola. We got two shots of a half inch of rain a couple days ago, along with uh, lots of wind and a little bit of snow. But it was good moisture, it's just what we needed. And then in a week's time, forecasted is another kind of rain event so it would be nice to be done by then this is in vigor canola size b so seeded at 4.7 pounds per acre this big bag will seed 200 acres This field was sprayed five days ago, and there's good activity on these target weeds. They're pretty, pretty sick looking, pretty twisted up, starting to wilt down, so that is a good sign. There's really good moisture. We had kind of two days of rain a few days ago. There he was. Is that canola? is about an inch or a little bit deeper than usual uh, we've we've kind of over the years been seeding at half inch to three quarters but we found it a bit shallow so now we're we're all of an inch and the canola will still come up from an inch down mineral bander between the row is a little bit deeper at least two inches There's the nitrogen there, so that is good also. Just across the fence line, we have wheat seeded. Let's check on that. There they are. Just started to, just started to germinate this guy. It'll be a bit till this wheat is up. This was our second last wheat field, but we have lots of wheat that is up already. So this is our first seeded wheat field. It was seeded about two weeks ago. You can see the nice rows, nothing's plugged, seeding rate looks about right. The wheat looks plenty thick. No plugged runs, we don't think, because that sucks. Just a little mistake and be reminded of it all year. So that's what the wheat looks like when it's when it's young. My brother, he's the fertilizer guy, so he's got the truck full already. Now I can unload these canola bags that we don't need. The canola is being seeded at 4.7 pounds per acre. When we do that, this bag seeds 10 acres and those mini bulks will seed 200 acres. 4.7 pounds per acre because we are looking for a desired plant density of six plants per square foot based on a 60% survivability because some seeds don't come up or they die and they want you know five to seven plants per square foot so we are right on track for that. This canola seed size is, is relatively new. It used to be just seed at five pounds per acre and call it good. And now we're going for more of a plant density. It's supposed to be a little bit more accurate. I don't mind this actually, uh, as long as you get all the same size canola, we have all size B. So when we switch canola varieties, we don't have to recalibrate the drill because it's all going to be at 4.7 pounds per acre. It is nice and calm out, but it froze the last two nights, so I don't want 
gonna spray it today until it warms up overnight a little bit. Last night it was minus four. But I do want to pull the sprayer out because I'm getting a code on the screen saying my hydraulic filters are clogged. And while I was seating yesterday, my brother and my dad, they changed three of the four hydraulic filters, but it's still coming up on the screen. So either the fourth hydraulic filter is clogged, which they couldn't get off because it's so tight, or it's the sensor. But I don't know where the sensor is. So we're gonna revisit this right now. Now this mother can't bend. I can't swear. Uh, oh, it moved, it moved. Uh, it cracked. There we go. Oh, no way. It's working. <laughs> Okay, so wait. Okay, well we gotta go, so should we just leave it like that? Okay. And then someone can do it after. The two filter wrench system the filter? with the bar on the other filter wrench from down below and it finally cracked loose. Nice. Drill is empty again. Don't need to fill canola because he should be good for a while for that. Just, uh, just fertilizer and then I'll switch my dad off. She's tight like a tiger. So now on canola, our sulfur blend is in the back tank four and tank one in the flex tank up at the front. Still has the nitrogen in it and then on the side here the saddle tank is called is where the canola is it's just a small tank a 40 bushel tank so you're not putting on a lot of canola 4.7 pounds like i said so just the canola is in here using a very slow moving metering auger that's supposed to be highly accurate and the seeds are small and you want to be right for this rate Now on my camera I can show my uh, saddle tank with the canola in it, it's the blue seed, and then the rest, uh, nitrogen, nitrogen, sulfur blend, and then on my scale, uh, that's the total weight, and then the saddle tank is how much is in there. Okay, back in the saddle, now those guys can deal with that hydraulic filter even though the tough part's already done. Just the other day my dad was seating and all of a sudden an alarm came on the monitor saying no communication, no communication from the tank and the drill to the tractor and we thought, oh boy, we are in one. So where do you start? Underneath the tank there are three ECUs and on the cultivator, tillage unit, whatever you want to call it, there are two ECUs and both of those have to communicate with the tractor, the monitor here in the cab. We were underneath the tank dealing with those ECUs earlier, so we thought we might have messed something up, but that was like a week prior, so we didn't think it was that. It had to be like a broken wire or like a short somewhere, but to find that, there's so much wiring throughout these drills that, you know, we thought it would take forever to find. So we got our dealer out, and it took two days, but we found the short at a, at a plug it was full of water that shorted the system and lost communication with the monitor. And it was raining anyway, so we didn't we didn't uh, lose that much time. So we cleaned out that plug, dried it out, plugged it back in, and, and we were back online. So we were pretty lucky. What the, oh sh The hydraulic line just rubbed through on the mineral bander hose. Hi, I blew a hydraulic hose. Are you serious? Yeah. So any of those spares that we have work? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I'll be there right away. Okay.
Well, we're gonna have to probably zip tie it to that other hole. Or something. It was zip tied there, oh. and I cut it. Oh. Just pull. Can you reach that? Now, how much oil are we gonna put in? We had spare hoses, so we slammed that hose on and the hydraulic oil actually pierced that mid-row bander hose. So we gotta tape that up. And then it only took about a jug and a half of hydraulic oil, so that's not too bad. Sometimes we have to put in like 10 jugs. I'm back in the game, pit crew pulled through once again. We had hoses pre-made, so we just slammed another hose in there. And uh, yeah, 20 minutes down. But that's kind of the easy stuff. You blow a hose, you blow a bearing, you know, stuff like that, mechanical. You know what the problem is, you just, you just have to fix it. Electrical, that's a different story. We've had to put in like all the jugs we've had in the shop before. And then you're going back to the city for more because you don't have enough. That, that sucks. After the oil coats the drill, and the dust just sticks to it and it gets so dirty. And it'll stay pretty pretty black there for, well, until it rains, if that even washes it off. One of the big features of these Versatile Delta tracks is that the transmission reservoir and the hydraulic reservoir are separate. So you blow a hose on your implement, it drains your hydraulics, but it doesn't uh, drain your transmission reservoir, so you can still move. Then the pit crew said that they got the hydraulic filter off and went to change it. And when they went to change it, the threads that the filter spins onto are wrecked. So that's not good. There's always something. Every day there's always something going on. Now we put some oil in and now when folding up, it pushes hydraulic oil back into the tractor. So when we're operating, you can barely see it in the sight gauge, but when we're folded up, the sight gauge is right full. And if we put in too much oil, it'll blow this cap right off. So my dad's watching the, uh, the sight gauge. I'm just saying, like, it could happen. It might have happened before. Lots of room. Driving on this little goat trail. Driving back to the yard, gonna refill up, then we are good for the rest of the day. Forgot the beacon on. This is the culprit right here. The mid-row bander hose, rubbing through this hydraulic hose, wore through the rubber, then wore through the steel, and that's what caused the leak. New development on the sprayer, the threads are fine. There was a nut on the backside of the housing that the filter turned into that we didn't know about. So I'm thinking you had to turn that nut and maybe the filter at the same time or something. But instead, Carter and I were putting two filter wrenches on the filter and using bars as an extension for leverage. So I, I guess now that you think about it, if you had to do that to get the filter off, you're probably doing it wrong. But we were pretty happy once we cracked it off. Started a new field here. Uh, I know you're gonna watch this a week or two later, but it is game three of the Oilers versus Calgary tonight, so I'm gonna listen to the game. I uh, may get switched off later and watch the end of it. So I know you're way ahead of me, you know what happens, but uh, comment your one team to win the Stanley Cup down below. Thanks for watching.